if you're looking for the ultimate three quarter ton pickup truck that still retains a lot of towing and payload capability, then you want this. This is the 2024 GMC Sierra 2500 AT4X AEV edition. That is quite a mouthful, and I'm probably just gonna be calling it an AT4X in this video. Now I have a really limited amount of time with this truck, so let's just run through what you get for about $100,000, which is the model we're taking a look at right here. This is gonna start just about $82,000. Of course, if you want the diesel engine, that's about $10,000. If you want the AEV edition package, that's about another $10,000 on top of this. And the AEV edition package comes with the AEV front bumper. This looks an awful lot like the other AT4X AEVs, where we have the big recovery hook locations up front. We have the cutout here for a winch. We don't get a winch from the factory in this model, but we do get that winch capability. I wouldn't be surprised if GMC started offering one right from the factory soon though. Let me know what you think about the look of this truck. I do think it looks better than the Power Wagon. The Power Wagon is really the AT4X's only direct competition in North America at the moment. But there is a pretty big difference between this and that Ram. And this is the biggest difference. You can get this with the 6.6 .6 liter Duramax diesel. And you can't get the Power Wagon with the diesel because the winch fitment and the cooling required for the Power Wagon's design just wasn't up to the task. The other reason you should get this over the Power Wagon is it's quite simply a better truck. As much as I like the Ram 1500, and it's still one of my top picks in the half ton segment, the three quarter ton and one ton Rams, they're just a little bit on the old side. And not only does this have the diesel in the off-road format truck, we also have the excellent 10 speed automatic transmission. Now you notice that badge said, that badge said Allison on it. This is actually a General Motors in-house design transmission. It was tested and validated by Allison. Now around the side, you'll notice there is a lot of pinstriping because we've been off-roading with this, admittedly not heavy duty off-roading, even though this is a heavy duty truck, but that's what's going on here. And again, limited amount of time to film. Back here in the back, you can see we get the AEV badging, we get the AEV bumper. This section of the bumper is a plastic insert because GMC puts uh, the radar sensor for the blind spot monitoring system right in that area there. But the rest of the bumper is steel and it's designed to accept most of the weight of the truck or all the weight of the truck when off-roading to actually slam down on that rear bumper. So that's definitely one of the reasons you might want to get this upgraded AT4X. But the other reason is that it still tows like a three quarter ton truck and has all the three quarter ton truck features that we've been seeing in the GMC for a while, including the only trick tailgate in this segment. For some reason, if you get the Ram 2500 or 3500, you don't get the barn doors in the back. Same thing for the F250 and 350, you don't get the new barn door. This is really handy because not only does it allow you to get a little bit closer to the bed, uh, you can also retain things in the bed with that little shelf in that position. You can also do it in this upright position, it flips and folds in a bunch of different ways so you can put longer items in the cargo area. And of course, it also functions as a step. Uh, let's see here, we have to actually raise it back up to lower it back down, and then it flops in that manner. Then you can use it as a step, which definitely makes getting in the back of a three quarter ton truck easier since this is a, a pretty big truck with a pretty big back end there. If you wanna save some cash, you wanna get the gasoline engine. That's gonna produce just over 400 horsepower, about 464 pound feet of torque. If you want more power and more than double the torque, then you want this diesel engine. But again, it's gonna cost you about $10,000. Uh, this is gonna give you 470 horsepower, 975 pound-feet of torque, still routed to the ground via a 10-speed automatic transmission and a rear locker. Two-speed transfer case, of course, is uh, standard on the AT4X. One weird twist, though. We don't get a front locker in the AT4X or even the AT4X AEV, which is another $10,000. That's how we get up to about the $100,000 price point of this particular model. I do think the lack of a front locker is a bit weird. GMC didn't really explain why we don't have a front locker up front. I think they believe that the customer is not too interested in it maybe, maybe they don't need it. It could also have something to do with that massive 975 pound feet of torque and the fact that when this is in four low, that torque multiplication is gonna be 
absolutely bonkers. So maybe they were concerned about braking things if you had a locking front, a locking rear, and of course, four low engaged, which binds that center coupling as well. Any way you slice it, this is a ton of power, and it's significantly more than you'll find in the power wagon or indeed the Ram 2500 period, because the Ram does not get the max power output in that format. You have to step up to the one ton truck. Now in the Ford lineup, I know I have been talking a lot about the Ram, but in the Ford lineup, Ford doesn't really have anything quite like this, especially not like the AEV edition. You can get the F-250 with the Tremor package, but the Tremor package is not gonna be quite as hardcore off-road. We're not gonna get the same sort of tire setup here. We're not gonna get the DSSV dampers that we find in this model. This is obviously a beefier upgraded version of what we find uh, in the regular AT4X. On the other hand, you aren't gonna get a solid front axle in here like you could get in the Ram. So if you're really worried about solid front axle versus independent front suspension, I don't know why you would be, but that is one point of differentiation. Now let's talk about how this does out on the road before we go inside. Out on the trail, obviously we didn't have a great deal of time to spend with this model, but we were spending some time on mild ranch trails, the sort of off-roading work that people would do if they own a ranch, say out here in Montana. You know, that's probably the best use case for this. It is awfully large, about 250 inches long. So something like the regular Silverado or Sierra AT4X or ZR2, whichever one you're interested in, they're gonna be a little bit easier to take on a you know, off-road trail out of the national park or BLM property, something like that. And of course, the Canyon AT4X and the AT4X AEV edition, they're gonna be much easier than either of those options to get on narrower trails, which is why earlier today, I spent much more time in the Canyon off-roading. This is still very capable, but obviously it's still gonna be pretty heavy. And there's a reason for that. GMC wanted to give us an off-road vehicle that has the ability to tow over 18,000 pounds. And if you are cross-shopping this against the power wagon, you should know that the power wagon's towing capability and payload capability actually drops below a Ram 1500 Rebel. We find very similar stout payload and towing capabilities in the F-250 Tremor, but without as much off-road ability and as much off-road changes as we find in this model. As we're looking at here, this is capable of 2,500 pounds of payload. It will go a little bit higher depending on the options. And you do take a slight payload and towing reduction to get the AEV package because of some of the extra curb weight that has been added to the vehicle. But it's a relatively minor drop in payload and towing capability. You can still do more than a ton in the bed and you can still put more weight in the back than you can legally tow in a decent number of states in the United States. Performance, absolutely excellent, thanks to the 6.6 .6 liter diesel and of course the 10 speed automatic transmission. It's not really gonna be too much different than the rest of the 2500 lineup. It tows really well, nice and quiet on the inside, but obviously it's gonna feel much bigger and heavier than the other AT4Xs. If you wanna know more about how this drives on-road and off-road, be sure and check out some of the other content. I was able to spend more time at the launch of this generation 2500. Now, with that out of the way, let's take a look at the inside. A solid reason to get the GMC over the competition is that the interior, I think, is a bit more attractive and more comfortable both. We find the excellent massaging seats here. That's the massage button right there. And this is much more of a European luxury car style massage rather than the anti-fatigue massage that we find in the Ford lineup. On the headrests, we find the AEV logo embroidered there on the top, the AT4X badging right there, and essentially the same interior that we find in the 1500 version of the AT4X with only a few modest changes. So over here on the dashboard, we find lots of stitched materials, which is a nice touch. We find the big touchscreen LCD right in the middle with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, big LCD instrument cluster right there as well. But you notice we don't have a console shifter, we have a column shifter instead. And that gives us just a tiny bit more space right here in the middle of everything. We still have the trailer brake controller right there in the middle, the sort of piano key bank of buttons there, and a little bit too much gloss black plastic for my tastes. On the other hand, we find attractive wood trim on the front doors, some eccentric stitching there, and some different textures going on for the soft touch components on the doors that matches the textures going on on the outboard portion of the seats. These are, of course, heated and ventilated in the front. There's also a full color heads up display, but kind of surprising for a truck theoretically focused at long distance travel, no availability of Super Cruise. We do, however, have an imitation suede headliner. As you can see, legroom in the back is definitely decent. I have about seven inches of legroom right there with the front seat adjusted for me at six feet tall. Big, wide center console there, heated rear seats, 
Sorry, we have lots of stuff in here because this vehicle has been off-roading. So there's the, the radio that GM put in there, my camera bag over there on that side. Lots of stuff just hanging out in here because it's a pretty big roomy area. And that includes rear seat headroom. You can see I have quite a lot of it going on back here. So if you've got a taller crew, this is definitely the kind of vehicle you'd want to take a look at. And a reasonable amount of, of space between my head and the side of the vehicle. I wouldn't want to do a lot of off-roading from the back seat, but this is certainly a relatively comfortable place to spend your time on the highway. Out on the road and out on the trail, it's really clear that the Sierra 2500 AT4X AEV Edition is A, a mouthful, and also B, bigger and heavier than the other AT4Xs we were driving this day. And that's why GM didn't put us on a terribly technical trail, to be perfectly honest. They instead said that this is the kind of trail that they think the three quarter ton shopper would be more apt to be on. So if you have a big ranch somewhere and you do, I don't know, whatever kind of work you have to do out there on your property, you would theoretically take this particular Sierra to the job site. But also people that are interested in say, camping and overlanding, and they wanna go further off the beaten path, but they don't wanna give up the kind of fifth wheel or regular conventional towing capability or the ability to put a big camper on the back. That's why you want the 2500, because you can simply put more weight in the bed of this AT4X than the other models. But they're clearly gonna be compromises. You can see in some of these shots that visibility is definitely compromised because this is considerably higher off the ground than the 1500 AT4X, and the hood definitely is higher as well, really creating some blind spots on the front end for off-roading. Also, this is longer than the other AT4Xs, so it's simply harder to get a trail that is big enough for this vehicle. And that's why I really appreciated the fact that we have the front view cameras. In this particular camera view, you can actually see those front view cameras. They were definitely very helpful. Some of the folks that were on the trails did end up actually clipping the edge of some of these rocky outcroppings that you can barely see in some of this footage here. And that's really the big reason that you want the front view cameras and that I really appreciate that they're here on a truck this big. Other than that, really the story about the AT4X is that you don't lose most of the three quarter ton capability in order to get the off-road capability that this provides. Obviously, the off-road capability is provided by not just the four-wheel drive system, but also the all-terrain tires. And you will notice that the all-terrain tires are definitely gonna be better in this application going down some of these steeper slopes than the stock tires in a regular heavy-duty truck. I'm honestly surprised GM opted not to give us a front locker in this AT4X, because that's one of the things that would be difficult to do aftermarket, whereas most of the other modifications for the AT4X and the AT4X AEV edition could be done aftermarket on not just this GMC, but also on a Ram or on a Ford. So if you wanted to give yourself a little bit of a lift, if you wanted to swap in aftermarket tires, B block capable uh, wheels, etc., you could do that in an F250 or a Ram 2500 or this, but offering a locker from the factory, that really would have set this apart. Also perhaps maybe some extra off-road oriented software for the traction management system, that could have been interesting as well. The best way to think of this is as taking a three quarter ton truck more off-roading than average, but not quite as far as some of the other AT4Xs in the GMC lineup. The rest of the driving nature, it's exactly what you'd expect from a heavy duty truck, especially a GM heavy duty truck. The diesel engine is excellent. There's an awful lot of torque. You have the ability to get the high output diesel engine in the three quarter ton truck, something that you cannot do in the Ram line. If you want to get your hands on the new 2500 AT4X AEV edition, be prepared to have a pocketbook about as big as this truck is because the AT4X is already pretty expensive. It starts at $84,795, including destination for 2024. If you want the diesel on a regular AT4X, that's going to be $94,285. If you want the AEV edition on your AT4X, it's about $10,000 more. So you're basically looking at about $102,000 or so for an AEV with the diesel engine. That is an awful lot of cash. Let me just be really upfront. That is significantly more expensive than most F-250 Tremors that I've been able to price out. Significantly more expensive than a power wagon. But that does make sense because this GMC really is operating in a segment of one. If you want a thousand pound feet of torque, if you want a 10 speed automatic transmission, you want steel off-road bumpers, recovery hooks, the ability to add a winch to your factory bumper, all the warranty support wrapped into this with everything that is this insane truck, massaging seats, big LCDs inside, comfortable, quiet interior, etc. 
you have exactly one option and it's going to look exactly like this. Let me know what you think about that down there in the comments section below. And do you think this is worth the six figure price tag? I am a little bit torn on that one, but GMC says they have a ton of people waiting in line for their AEVs already. So if you are one of those folks, let me know down there in the comment section below. And if you're everybody else, let me know, is this truck worth six figures? See all of you next week. If you thought I was done talking, you're almost right because I should give a quick plug, a quick shout out to our other videos coming up. Uh, you may have either seen the video on the Canyon AT4X, the HD AT4X, or the 1500 AT4X, or the entire pack of at forks as I might say. But if you haven't, be sure and check out our videos on the 2024 1500 AT4X with the new turbo. Of course, the first ever AT4X heavy duty over here if you want off-road capability and stout towing and hauling, or if you want something that's more affordable, easier to park, and honestly more nimble on trails, then you want to take a look at the Canyon AT4X. And with that out of the way, again, hit that subscribe button, find us over on social media, Twitter, Facebook, X, Post, News, all those things that you're supposed to be following, and I will see all of you next week.